we're gonna have presenter number four. We're, we're doing all right here in time. Doug, I saw you somewhere. Yeah. There you are. Hey, all right. Changing gears a little bit because you know grass is growing somewhere in the world. It's not here. Okay. Somewhere grass is growing, but not here. Uh, this is audience participation time. I'm Doug Zeisel, Chief Operating Officer for Little Mighty Mower. It's a lawn mower. What's the big deal? I'll tell you what the big deal is. How many people live in a family that has a lawn mower? Raise your hands, please. Well, come on, more people on lawn mowers than that. Well, great. You're in good company. There are some 54 million lawn mowers in families out there where people mow their grass when the grass grows. So it's a big market. But guess what? The technology for lawn mowers hasn't changed in the last 50 years. How many people have a battery powered lawn mower sitting out there? One, yay, two, great. So you can see that there is a great potential for a new entry into this market. Because the fact of the matter is, there aren't that many people that own battery powered lawnmowers. Well, why did you buy a battery powered lawnmower? I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you to answer that right now. I'll tell you why. Number one, when you go to fill the gas tank of a battery powered lawnmower, what happens? It runs over onto the ground, doesn't it? Fifth, sorry. Wrong time to. Let me start over. When you fill the gas tank of your gas powered lawnmower, what happens? It runs over onto the ground. Inevitably, some 17 million gallons of gasoline are spilled each year, filling up the tanks of these monsters. That's a lot of gasoline. And what happens? It all evaporates, it goes up in the atmosphere. Horrible greenhouse gases. What's another problem with gas powered lawn mowers? Well, they're very polluting. 5% of the nation's air pollution is due to gas powered lawn mowers. That's not very good, is it? And so more and more people are buying battery powered lawn mowers or electric lawn mowers. The market for these mowers has doubled in the past 10 years, it has attracted numerous competitors. There are 18 brands of battery powered lawn mowers out there. That's amazing. So, what do we have that's different? With 18 competitors out there, you better have some kind of differentiation. As I said, the te basic technology of a lawnmower hasn't changed much in the last 50 years until now. The little mighty mower has a patented anti-stall device. Another problem with lawnmowers <coughs> is that you need a huge motor, and if it's a battery-powered lawnmower, you need a huge battery to power the beast. That means that your lawnmower is going to weigh 50 pounds or more. This little guy weighs 14 pounds. Yay. I can hang it up on a wall. I can store it in my closet. If I live in a townhouse, it's easy to get from the front yard to the backyard. Think about that. I don't have to go all the way around the block with my lawnmower. If I want to take it to the house, I can put a bag on it and carry it through the living room, put it in the backyard in the mow. Patented technology. Let's get to that. Little Mighty Mower has a tilting mechanism which allows the blades to tilt when you get in tall grass. So we don't need a huge batter, a huge motor. We don't need huge batteries to power the motor. We have four small blades and four and four small motors powering those blades. Those are electric string trim motors. It's the same kind of motor that you find in a string trimmer that's powered by battery. So, if you, if you recall, when you get into tall grass with any mower, and you don't want it to stall, what do you do? You push down on the handle to tilt the blades. Well, this little guy 
you can tilt the blades for the grass setting. So if you have real tall grass, you just tilt the blades to a high setting. If you have low grass, you just leave it level. So that overcomes the problem of stalling on the tall grass and allows us to have a smaller battery and smaller motors. Questions? All right. Let's ask for a demo, but <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get the grass set up here in time. All right, so um, can I just go to get back? How large is the battery and uh, how long will it last on a single charge? Well, we're actually um, looking at that. Uh, the batteries that we have in this prototype last about 50 minutes, so it's enough to, to cut a uh, quarter acre of yard. These are lead acid batteries. So um, I knew because you presented this in uh, Philly, and so the question has to do with like um, the typical your tip your target audience, because obviously the lawnmower companies are very well funded, right? Um, but but they, they do have a gap here, and I think it's because you're focusing on a particular target market, so. Yeah, we are focusing on owners of small yards, quarter acre or less. The average uh, lawn size in the United States is about a third of an acre. So we will cover a lot of those yards. But if you're, um, again, in a townhouse or if you have a small yard, why have a big beast one mower that <clears throat> don't know if it's going to start? You have to change spark plugs. Gas lines get clogged. Carburetor fouls. You know, all you have to do with this is pull the trigger and it goes. Thanks, Ron. Yes, sir. How wide is the cut and what is your target retail Well, I'm glad you asked that question. We have a survey out there, and I'm going to put a link to that on the Columbia Tech Breakfast communication. And I'd love you to tell me what you think the retail price should be. We have a, a number in mind. At $249, we can sell this at a 15 10 discount to big box retailers. However, it looks like the price might want to be a little bit lower. So you tell us, we can produce this for $70, probably less. Um, Cutting width on this model is 14 inches. Uh, by adding another two motors, we can go up to 18 inches. We could also make it robotic. That's not our initial target market. Yes, ma'am. How long does it take to recharge the battery? And how long does it take to recharge the battery? Yes, uh, recharging, um, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but uh, I'm sure it's overnight. Um, that kind of a battery usually takes at least four or five hours. You just plug it into a charger, which will come with the mower. When you plan to target the robotic market? <laughs> he wants a robot. <laughs> we are a um, late incubation stage company. We've been using this prototype for, uh, this particular prototype for all summer. It does what we want it to do. This is the fifth generation of prototype, but we're still, we're getting ready to launch, and you know what that means. We need money. <laughs> two, yes, qu sir. two questions, what's your cost of production per unit, and how much money do you need? Um, well, we're not allowed to talk about money here. <laughs> cost of production per unit is $70 or less. We're really targeting to get it down to 50. Um, and the other thing, what we're doing with this, which is really kind of cool, I mean, I don't mean to be too promotional here, but we're going to have this assembled in Baltimore by a not-for-profit that specializes in helping economically disadvantaged workers. So we think this is going to be good for the environment. We think it's a great product, and we have a social benefit. Excuse me, have you put this on something like Kickstarter? I think you'd find a really receptive audience there. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, and that's something that we're looking at doing. It's an educational process I have to go through. If anybody wants to accelerate that process with me, I'd be happy to have your help. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions behind? Yes. Uh, 
considering the environmental benefits, have you thought about looking into any tax credits that, that might be available? No, actually I haven't, and that's a great idea. Thank you. Is, is the battery itself a tie into the mower? The batteries are removable, so when you're finished mowing, you pull it out and put it on the charger and charge it back up. No, I mean replacing a battery and purchasing a battery. Is that a tie-in through your company? It will be, absolutely. We will offer replacement batteries and, and a recycling service because as you know, batteries, lead batteries themselves are, are a problem. We can offer lithium batteries, but it will drive the price way up, be more than the lower. So you couldn't purchase your battery anywhere else. You can only purchase your battery through your company. It's specific for the, the mower person. No, it is not. It's not. You could purchase it elsewhere if you can source it. Is there, I, I don't know much about energy, is there any way that you can calculate or say, like, this unit act absolutely lose, uses less energy than a gas car mower? I mean, obviously it's less polluting, so there's green effects from that. But is there a way to calculate and say, per lawn mode, we use less energy, or how do you, how do you calculate I think that? there's probably a way to do that, and the inventor, I'm not the inventor, I'm his chief operating officer. I work with technologists that need help launching their businesses. Um, he an, has a PhD in electrical engineering, I'm sure he can figure something out, but we haven't looked at that. Thank you for the idea. So, so on your website or wherever the information may be, do you, have you guys done like a focus group survey, some type of, uh, I'm, I'm sure you have, I mean, is that information available to, you know, for individuals to see what, what the, uh, what, we're, what we're the public in the process has to say about of, it? Of gathering information via survey right now, we have a survey monkey survey out there, and I'm going to provide a link to that. I would love to get feedback from the group here to help us with things like deciding where we're going to set the final retail price? Well, I'm actually talking about a survey from people who've tested the unit. In other words, have you put 500 units out there or 50 units out there and say, you know, you guys do this, go crazy with it, come back, tell me what you think, blah, blah, blah. Right now, we, we don't have money to build 15 units to put out there in consumers' hands. One of the problems is the um, product liability insurance is very expensive for lawnmowers. So what we're trying to do I can't even talk about raising money. <laughs> well, I would say, could I guess there's some new laws on solicitation, so I think he has to be careful. If he is raising money, so if you want to talk to him about it, you should go and find him out. But awesome, awesome detail on, on this, and uh, good job with that. I do think that, I think a Kickstarter campaign, how many people here would like, actually, just, just, just a general survey, not talking about this box in general, but how many people here would support a Kickstarter campaign for something like this? You may have some support here, so it might not be a bad way to go. So if you do decide to do a Kickstarter campaign, we'll share the link with everybody. And of course, as part of the Kickstarter campaign, you'd maybe get an early access to the unit. So, so to your question, maybe this might be a good way of getting early access, helping to fund that.